Okay, so uh, something that I'd really like to try and give as much clarity to as possible is just the uh, very, very basics of selection, which is obviously something that we've really, really touched on already, but I really do mean the basics of selection. So this is not glamorous stuff, but it's just so, so fundamental to everything. Uh, it can be the source of so much frustration if we don't get this down that I just really want to give uh, just one point, really, just um, just its own special attention here in this segment. And uh, really what I'm referring to is the fact that in many different applications, if we were to just uh, click and drag across the screen just to generate some kind of marquee selection, some kind of border select, some kind of box that gets drawn across the screen, everything within the confines of that box will be added to the selection. Now, the um, uh, we have actually already seen that within Blender. We know that what we can do is the terminology for it is the border select that we can see here. Um, we can just click this option here or we can just press the B key. And now, so if we just press the B key and now left click a drag across the screen, we can see that everything within the contents of that box there gets um, selected. Now, the problem with that is counterintuitively, it was the left click which is the key distinction to make here, we would left click across the screen to select things, which is counterintuitive against the way that in which we're trying to be instructed that it is right click to um, select things. So um, just to recap this tool really, we could B to left click and drag across the screen, we would B and then middle click to remove from the selection and then we could B and then right click just to cancel the move if we didn't actually want to enter that tool or decided that we'd no longer needed it. So um, the way in which Blender is actually set up is the fact that if we were to right click and drag across the screen, nothing is happening at all. So that's kind of like a, um, uh, a, an option that is kind of uh, not actually set up yet. Um, what would happen if we happen to have a, an object selected is that if we were to now duplicate that same behavior. So if I was just to right click and drag across the screen, you can see that that object that happened to be selected is just being moved around. And uh, the way in which uh, that's useful is that it means that we can just click an object and just move it and then left click to confirm its move. And it's just a nice, quick and easy fluid movement that we can do there. Uh, in fact, this is not too dissimilar to um, a mode within Maya, which is called the tweak mode, uh, which means that what we can do is we can literally just click, move, and then uh, essentially you can, can do an action of moving something just in one click instead of actually just having to select something and then click again to move uh, in two different clicks there. Whereas uh, although this is actually two clicks as well, it's potentially a little bit faster to work with, maybe slightly more intuitive uh, um, and kind of creates a little bit more of a flow in that what we can do is you can right click and then immediately move and then just left click just to enter out of that and then you right click to move, you uh, grab the next thing that we want to move and so we can feel like we can move things across the screen very, very fluidly, very, very quickly. The problem with this is, uh, and I guess the reason that Maya, for example, has this as an option that is not on by default and is something that you have to enable, is that it's kind of um, to help potentially, I guess, newcomers, um, people that are not quite used to the um, way in which things move. Um, it, in other words, it allows you to be deliberate in your actions um, to click and then select to click. And it, it sort of minimizes the chance of you accidentally moving something. Uh, which is um, obviously anyone can use this. It's not a kind of against the principle of a beginner using this. It's obviously open to anybody and anybody can use it and it's you get to grips with it in no time, but it's just the fundamentals of having that on by default might just be slightly um, tricky just to get the hang of. It's just one more thing to just make sure that you um, try and bear in mind to, to, to not actually nudge something by accident. Um, you have to just be careful and deliberate in your actions to just left, uh, just to right click and just select what you need to select. Now, there is a way in which we can actually just ignore this kind of um, uh, caveat altogether, and that is to essentially just induce that behavior. So Blender is very customizable and we can actually just essentially induce that kind of behavior. So let's just take a look at how we would do that. So what we can do is we can come to our file menu and ena uh, enable the um, uh, launch our user preferences window. And now within here, we uh, to make sure that we're in under the input tab and this is where we get all our hotkeys, the whole engine under the uh, the Blender interface here. It can be seen here. We can see there's absolutely tons of them. And this is just within a very uh, narrow parameter that we're actually looking at here. Um, there's so many more. So we actually know what we're looking for. So I'm going to use this filter just to be quick about it. So we can go border select 
And now if we actually look down, uh, we know that we're working within the 3D view. So we can see that there's border selections for uh, the outliner, weight paints, animation channels, so on. But what we're doing is we're working within the 3D view. So we just want to affect the way that this border select works within the 3D view. And um, so if I just click on the arrow there, just to take a look at this, we can see we're set to the keyboard. It's a quick keyboard shortcut and it's set to the uh, key B, which, uh, which we know. We know that that's the shortcut. So what we can do to change this is we can um, click on key the keyboard here just to bring our pull down menu. I'm going to set this to tweak and then that this gives us some different settings now. I'm now going to set that to select and then everything else is fine. So I can exit out of that now. So now if we actually try and right click and drag across the screen, we can see we now get our border selection. Uh, this, the basic border select that you might be familiar with. And the reason that that's quite handy is um, obviously the, the thing that that's now removed is the fact that if we try to right click this object and now try and move it in that kind of, as I say, the tweak mode that Maya called it. I know that we've just actually just set that to tweak, by the way, and that that is slightly confusing um, potentially, but just try and put that out of your mind, really. It's just uh, the, the terminology for it. But um, uh, the way that they're set up differently in different applications. I'm not trying to draw confusion here. Obviously, I mean, I'm trying to clarify things. Uh, but really, uh, what it enables us to do is not actually accidentally nudge something out of the way as we right select something. Uh, so that's quite handy. Uh, and it just means that we can now just easily just select that. And now we can left click to drag uh, to make that action very, very deliberate, which is something that you might find quite handy. Um, something else is the fact that um, uh, the the other thing that you might like to the, to create to have this border select to be thought of as more of a complete tool is the fact that what we can do is you want to obviously remove from selection as well. Now what we could do is probably add another uh, shortcut key to the uh, interface as into within the user preferences that we were just looking at there. Uh, there are ways to do that. I think I have a, a, a link to some other people talking about that and to explore that. I haven't actually looked too deeply into that just because for me, um, I actually do use the Blender's um, uh, default options for most of the time. But if I happen to find that I'm gonna be doing a lot of uh, this border selection type method, um, and uh, not using any of the other methods that are actually available to us, which we'll go over in due course. Um, but uh, the, the, then uh, I would probably set it to this. Um, it's not actually that much of a problem because what we can do is if we wanted to remove maybe this cube from the selection now, and we wanted to do it with the border selection, uh, what we can do is we can click across there like that, and then um, we can just middle click and then it just removes it from the selection. That's probably, I'm just gonna duplicate this with Shift D and just move that across and now right click across everything just to highlight everything, just to select everything. Now let's say we wanted to remove these middle cubes from the selection, just to do that again, I'm just going to right click across them too and now press middle click just to end the tool and you can see it's actually deselected the um, uh, middle cubes as well. So uh, that's basically all we need really. That's just maybe how you might like to have it set up. It's quite basic to, to do there. If you do get stuck and you want to remove that and bring it back to what it was, we can see we've now got this restore. Uh, we can click that and we can actually just scroll down and find the action very, very specifically. And there it is. We can also click on this arrow here and now we can see it's actually just restored it to its default behavior. Um, and now we can see that we've now got access to that kind of tweak tool. So it's worth knowing that that's there. It might be seen as um, uh, potentially just slightly elaborate in, in the way that we're going about this to just create this behavior but there you there you have it that's how you would do it and uh, hopefully i've really drilled home and given you the options that you need to just get quite fluid and comfortable with just some of these basic ways in which we can move about and the basic selection settings in order to get access to this object's vertices, edges and faces, all we'll need to do is just come down to the header bar of the 3D view and we can see we're actually set to object mode right now but if we just click on this pull down menu we can switch it to edit mode which is basically the uh, Blender terminology for sub object or component level and then as soon as we click on that we can see we get some extra icons in the um, uh, uh, further along the header here and these are representative of vertices, edges and faces. Um, the shortcut keys here by the way are the tab key to to toggle between those two modes, object and edit mode. And uh, also we can go control tab to get at the location of the cursor, uh, a short menu here to select between vertices, edges and faces. 
Um, something else that we can actually do is just shift select on these and that gives us access to a kind of a, uh, not too dissimilar to Maya's multi-select. So we can click that face and then um, possibly that vertex as well. Incidentally, just note that this whole edge now happens to be uh, highlighted, even though we haven't actually selected it, just purely because if that vertex is selected and that vertex is selected, then essentially it's no different than that actual edge being selected as well. So um, because that edge is made up of those two vertices. But anyway, that's just a brief aside. Um, and uh, that should just cover how to get into our um, sub-object or component level. Okay, so uh, although I'm going to go over modeling in a lot more detail a little bit later on, what I thought it might be nice to do is to just give uh, some attention to uh, the most fundamental 3D modeling tools that are available to us, the th sorts of things that you might come to expect, things like extrude, edge loops, bevel, and subdivide. Just to quickly point out where they are, just to get you off and running as quick as possible, but um, also trying to just point out a couple of handy things along the, along the way. Uh, for example, um, at the moment we're in our object mode and just wanted to point out that what we've got over here is our tool shelf and this is kind of context sensitive because we have this mesh object type selected. If we just come over here and select our camera instead, uh, this kind of updates and we get some different items in here or at least certain things that are removed that can't be done to a camera but that can be done to an object so we'll get some things update there. We've also got our object menu here which basically gives us everything else related to the objects that we can do at the object level. Um, and then once we switch to our edit mode to get access to our vertices, edges and faces, which is what we want to do for these particular modeling tools that we're going to have a look at now, uh, note that we can't now get access to things at the object level. So to be able to select this camera now, we're going to need to come back into object mode. So we're going to e exit out of our edit mode. Uh, and again, we can do that with the tab key to uh, quickly tab between those two different modes. Um, so let's take a look at the first thing, which is uh, the fact that this also updates and tries to keep the most uh, handiest tools in the tool shelf for us. Uh, but the uh, mesh menu down here pretty much has everything else. And also note that we've got the uh, faces, edges and vertices. And that shows us uh, three very handy shortcuts to know, which is the fact that we've got F for faces, E for edges and V for vertices, or at least held down with the control key anyway. And then we'll get access to these particular menus uh, at the location of the cursor. So if we were to go control F, we can see we now get access to things like, um, I don't know, maybe a, uh, just to uh, rotate the UVs on that, on that face or maybe to flip the normals or something like that. Uh, we'll just take a look at some of the basic ones now. So for example, like extrude, if I just select that face, just make sure we're on the face selection mode down here or press control tab to come down to make sure that we're on the face mode. And now what we can do is just simply press E to extrude. And then what happens is it locks the face along the side of the normal, um, uh, along the direction of the normal, should I say. And then what we can do is just left click to select. Uh, also note that when, as we do that, we often get a readout in the 3D views header. So we can see that there's a distance there along the normal and the distance in the, in the 3D world as well is also being represented. Uh, so we can see there now it's, it's uh, four units. So if I actually just left click now just to confirm that, uh, we can see that we've now exited out of the extrude tool, but we do get this little um, area down at the bottom of the tool shelf, this sort of toolbox area, which is going to give us access to the most recently performed operation. So we can now um, sort of uh, refine that or um, completely uh, obliterate what we've done there, basically. Uh, so that's extrude. But what we can also do is just note that we can uh, press E with multiple faces and it will keep them together. Um, so there won't be sort of extra faces in between these two that we've just created now. Um, so let's just move on to the next thing, which is edge loops. Um, so for this, all we need to do is just go control R. And then again, we can see that we get some um, help information down at the th header of the 3D view. We can see it's a selector ring to be cut, hence why it's a control R, not control L. Um, and then we use the mouse wheel or page up and down for the number of cuts and then hold alt for smooth. So if I just use the mouse wheel for now, we can um, scroll up to the amount of edge loops that we want to generate, which are evenly spaced in this area. What I'm doing is I'm just hovering the cursor over the edge that I want to uh, subdivide, uh, kind of create edge loops along, if you like. So if I just move the cursor, you can see we've now switched it to uh, along that axis and between those two edges. Um, so if I just left click to confirm that, we can see that all those edges are now generated. If I actually just do the one edge loop, something slightly different happens. So if I go control R and then just left click on here, we can see now I've not got any buttons held down, but it's actually generated this edge slide. 
and we can see we've got an update in the uh, header of the 3D view again. Now it does say E for even and F for flipped. Um, just to demonstrate very, very quickly what this is, I'm just going to highlight that one edge and just drag it down and then go Control R again and then left click one edge loop. We can see we kind of get a distance change between as it goes between one edge loop, which is slightly different shape than the top one, which is perfectly straight. Now what we can do is we can press E to go for even and now what that will do is you can see this little red um, vertex is, is uh, the, the vertex at the bottom of this yellow edge here is highlighted to show that it is trying to conform uh, the shape of the edge loop to that particular edge uh, loop that exists. If we want to flip it so that it's perfectly straight like the top line, we just press F. So now we can see we can um, conform it to one particular edge loop uh, shape than another. Or we can just take that off altogether um, by pressing E again and then it will sort of um, uh, create a sort of halfway point. So uh, that's the edge loops. Uh, next we've got our bevel. So if we just grab this edge at the top here, what we can do is uh, now employ our um, shortcut key, which is the control E. And we can see if we look down here, we can see there's a bevel. In fact, it's got its own shortcut key there, control B. So let's just do that, control B. And then what we can do is just move again the mouse uh, just to dictate the exact size there. And again, in the header of the 3D view, we get a readout of exactly what's happening there, exactly the distance and some other uh, options available to us. Um, so if we then click and have a look in the um, toolbox area, here we've got segments let's just turn that up to two and we can see we get a nice rounded uh, edge on that bevel there um, so finally we've got our subdivision um, so if we just take a look at say uh, those particular faces so I just went control tab and then selected the faces or of course we could do it down here as well if we wanted and then for subdivide what we can do is we can come into here we can go mesh and then um, we should be able to find our faces and then we should be able to subdivide them somewhere. In fact, no, we can't do it there. We What we would need to do is generate our specials menu. So this is another one to remember. So we've got our control F, E and V um, shortcut keys. And then what we're going to need to do is press W for our specials menu. And then we can see here we're at the top, right at the top, we get our subdivide options. Uh, so that, although we're dealing with faces, not absolutely everything is found within the faces, uh, just as the, um, the, the intuitive mistake I just made. Um, so what we can do then is just press subdivide and then we can see it's just subdividing those faces there equally. Um, it doesn't do it differently in the, along the U direction or the V direction. We're just going to get it equally subdivided. Um, and then we can just change it here, the number of uh, subdivisions we want to make. So for example, maybe something like that. And then uh, we've also got other options as well. So um, we can essentially, well, I'll let you play with that, but that's just basically the, the, um, the location of some of the most basic fundamental modeling tools that are available to us. Uh, so as I say, we'll go over them in a lot more detail a little bit later on, but hopefully that just points out uh, some um, uh, things to note, uh, really just to uh, get you off and started as soon as possible.